Today, what one of the things I want to warm up with is this idea of hostile dependency. What do you think that, this is the guy that coined the term Knight Aldrich in 1966. What do you think that means, hostile dependency? Just try. What do you think it means? We're just guessing. Yeah. So you're dependent on someone in an aggressive way. What else do you guys think? What does hostile dependency mean? So forceful, you feel like it's, you don't, but the word dependency means there's some dependency going on, right? So you have to depend on somebody, but you're using force, or you're angry, or you depend. How do you feel when you depend on someone? Helpless. You feel, you feel kind of helpless, huh? Yeah. When you have to depend on someone. What, what are the feelings that come up when you, when you depend on someone? Infantile, huh? Yeah. That's an interesting word. What made you think about that? Because the baby just cries because they're, they're not getting what they want. And so an adult who acts that way is said to be a, a hostile independent. Okay, so that is actually where we see this, right? Because the, the, the infant is, is most dependent on the parent, the caregiver, right? And the infant doesn't know how to express feelings. So they basically only have, you know, they, they have a range of feelings, but the ones that we really know about are like happiness and unhappiness, right? And the infant, you know, you ever seen a lactating mother, a breastfeeding mother, the infant can be quite violent with the breast. Like I want it right now, not when you want to give it to me. Where is it? It's not even your breast. It's my goddamn breast. Give it here now. And they can bite the breast, scratch the breast, kick, and all that. They can be hostile but dependent. Right? Uh, uh, why are they hostile? Why would there be a need for hostility? Huh? Well, anxious, yeah. Anxious about what? Getting what they want when they want it. Right, getting their need met, right? So they, the, the infant has to set off some sort of alarm that says, you know, give me what I want. Give me what I need now. Because if you don't, I'm dependent on you. I can't survive without you, right? So, so now we see this. So, you know, I'm into attachment theory, right? Remember I was talking to you guys about attachment. The, the mother and the infant are one system. They're attached. They're one system. We have to be spit out early. Then the infant and the mom are two systems. But this system can't survive without this one. And it's designed to grow in close proximity to the mother or to the father. You know, the infant has to be in close proximity. If not, what happens? Yeah, they don't survive, right? So, so it's critical. So there's a, there's a need to you know, bring that to the mom's attention or to act out these, fistal, these infantile uh, thoughts and feelings in an effort to try to get their needs met. And then mom helps the baby. Don't do that. That's not nice. Be gentle. Be gentle. Over time, the baby learns how to express feelings in a more appropriate way. But if you don't have that, if you don't have an adequate caregiver, somebody that's helping you identify feelings and expressing feelings in a constructive manner, you may not learn how to do that. And then you may move into other relationships and maintain a hostile dependency. Right? So we need to talk about that, right? Because as we begin... As we get older, our hostility begins to manifest itself in different ways, right? So we may have the kind of relationships where the closer we get to someone, the more uncomfortable we get.
the more our hostility rises. So, okay, now we talked about dependency, right? How do we feel when we depend on someone? What feelings come up? Vulnerable. Yeah, that's a serious feeling. What does that mean, vulnerable? Right, 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 that you can be taken advantage of. Like, like for social animals, a vulnerability would mean that something might come up that might, uh, they might reject me. See, I'm a social animal. Remember, I'm dependent on my mom, so if she rejects me, I'm, I'm done. You know, if the group rejects me, I can't survive. So uh, these feelings of vulnerability come up, right, Feelings of, let's, let's think about some, un, uh, I become, I feel helpless. I feel powerless. I feel vulnerable. I may feel inadequate. These are the hardest feelings for us to deal with. All right. How do we deal with those? Huh? When we say negatively, right, how do, what do you mean? What's one negative way that we deal with the feeling of feeling vulnerable? Huh? Depressed. We said depressed. You said explode, right? So, so anger, this guy, there's a guy, Raymond Novako, right, who wrote a piece, uh, Anger as a, as a Form of Image Control. Right? Anger is image control, right? So it's... Yeah, yeah. Men get points in our society for, for being crazy and being angry. People will leave us alone. So we can hide vulnerability with anger. Remember, anger is secondary. Under it is some guilt, some shame, some fear that I cover with anger, and that's done to control my image. So why would that be important? Why would my image be important? Social animal, I got an image. Why is that important? The ego, right. What, what else? Why, is that, why would that be important in a social group? Why would it be important for me to flash anger? Right, 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 right. So these feelings evolved, right, so that I don't broadcast vulnerability, right? Right. It's a way of protecting myself from a perceived threat from the group that he can be taken advantage of, that he's weak, that somehow he's not, he's not, uh, he's not capable of defending himself. So I flash anger, and people stay away from me. People stay back, and it works. It works. It works. It works. It works and then it doesn't work. Right? See, we're not, we're not, we're not arguing, we're not arguing over a kill on the plane anymore. You know, we, we killed a llama or something. You know, I don't have to, ah! I need to be cooperative in this society, right? I need to learn how to be cooperative. So these, I'm wired with these feelings, but I need some, I need to refine my use of anger. I can use it destructively or I can use it constructively. And here we're trying to refine the anger now. I don't want you to get rid of it. I want you to refine it. I want you to be able to use it productively. It's important. I don't want you to be without it. But I don't want you ending up in jail or hurting your family or destroying stuff that you really need. So we got to deal with this notion of hostile dependency. That, we have to deal with that. Right? That's real. I don't want to depend on you. I'm mad that I'm not able to take care of myself, and I t want to take that out on you. See, see, a, 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 to a certain degree, dependency makes me unhappy. Would you agree? When you depend on somebody, a part of it is that you're unhappy having to depend on. Well, have you ever had to depend on somebody and they, they let, you, let you down? How'd you feel? Yeah, yeah. What'd you say to yourself? Why? Yeah, why? I ain't gonna never let this shit happen to me again. Why'd I do? You know, we go through a whole, it can trigger a whole bunch of distorted thoughts, right? We don't like being dependent. We can become hostile, right? So we got to be careful, right? Well, now, I'm gonna I'm be careful. I'm not gonna push that too far, right? Ah. I found that every time I try to rely on somebody else, I'm not Right. So, 
so so okay 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 let's so you say every time you rely on somebody they let you down so now your strategy to living is not to rely on anyone okay now what do we think about that what do you guys think about that what's good about that what's what would be good about that not depending on anybody yeah 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 there's some good qualities to that taking more initiative doing things for yourself taking care of yourself, having a perception that you don't need anybody, right? So that, that, can, that can defend against the feelings of vulnerability so you don't have to deal with the reality that I'm born in a world and I'm alone and I'm vulnerable and I need help. If nobody shows me how to do certain things, I'll never know how to do them, right? What kind of work you do? Uh, uh, roofing, roofing, right? If nobody ever showed you how to put a shingle on, you, know, you wouldn't know how to do it, right? Right. We need other people, right? So we need, we, it, this isn't the problem. Dependency isn't the problem. Did you know that the, on the, when you buy the shingles, the directions are right there? Right. But somebody had to show you how to read. What about when you put them on even or? or well, it's, it, it got like the whole, you know, every, every last But, time. but, 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 somebody had to show you how to read. Yeah. Without somebody showing you how to read, Instructions on the label would be meaningless to you, right? So, so we're 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 in a situation where we need we depend on others. That's a reality. Infants, going back to, to infants, infants that are not picked up and held and cooed to and all that kind of stuff, bounced on the knee, die one hundred percent of the time. One hundred percent of the time they die. They need to have somebody. Hey, baby, what's going on? You know, and bounce them around, right? So we need to depend on people. But, the, but our problem is this, we, we, we can begin to depend on people with a certain amount of hostility, not understanding how to do this uh, constructively. So we don't necessarily, we're not, we're not necessarily dependent. What we are is What's the difference? What's the difference? What does interdependent mean? That means that um, we all have to cooperate with one another. It'd be a good idea huh, to cooperate with the people that you're involved with, right? Because I'm interdependent. Like if I go, if I spend all the money, right, it affects my partner. If I eat all the food, it affects the household because we're interdependent. What she does away from me affects me because we depend on each other in some healthy ways. So it, there's nothing wrong with being interdependent. There is something wrong with being hostily dependent where I'm mad at her. See, really, the reality is, is one of the reasons why I'm here and one of the reasons why you're sitting here is because you needed your partner to do something. You needed her to meet some sort of need, some sort of need, whether it was to just stop, whether it was to do something else, it was some need you needed her to meet. And out of that, out of her inability to meet that need, a perceived need that you had, you became hostile or she became hostile. It doesn't really matter Either you became hostile or she became hostile. And it, and it, it got to a place where could you step out of the house, please? You know that. So, yeah, so now we want to work on a mutual benefit, right? We want to work on being interdependent with people, not hostily dependent. You know, now look, look, when I'm dependent, it brings up these rough feelings, vulnerability. I don't want to feel vulnerable. So how do I compensate for that? How do I compensate? How do you compensate for feeling vulnerable? Well, you could, but that's not my first, that's not my first choice. My first choice is to disguise it. Yeah, to, yeah, I do the opposite, really. Right, right, right. But, but I'm, I'm just talking about how we cope with feeling dependent on somebody. See, when I feel vulnerable, when I feel inadequate, when I feel like I need you and I don't really want to need you, I need to hide that. And, and look, the best way to hide something from you 
is to hide it from myself. Sure. Everything we do, we do for a reason. Is it, I, I, no, I, I would think that uh, people do that because uh, people are inherently uh, aggressive and mean. I don't know that we're inherently aggressive or mean. We have the great potential to be uh, aggressive and mean. We don't have to be that way. Yeah. Yeah. And we again, we need to refine. See, we're built. We're we're built to chase down. A, we're built to chase down a wildebeest seven miles and day and night until we kill it. Right. But we've evolved into now we're living in cities where we don't need to act like that anymore. We have we have a brain that's developed where we don't need to behave like that. But we haven't caught up emotionally to what we can do. We can destroy the whole planet with the press of one button now. We're destroying the planet right now because we haven't matured enough emotionally to know that we're interdependent with the planet. If we if we kill the planet, it kills us. So we don't we haven't really thought about this. And some of it does. Somebody said the word ego. Some of it does have to do with ego, not having the right amount of humility to realize, you know, I'm interdependent with my kid. Yeah, he has some power, right? My kid can go to school and create a ruckus. Guess what they call I don't have any young kids anymore, but, you know, my kid has some power, right? You know about that, huh? Could you, could you come down to the school, please? You're on the job, right? So the kid has some power. We're interdependent in some ways, right? So I, I've got to be working on needs, identifying needs, right? Because your partner is, you're trying to get your needs through your, met through your partner, and your partner's trying to get their needs met through you. That's what it means to be in a... A relationship. Or a tree. Huh? Or a tree. Is a tree is like from everybody, right? Right, 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 right. A relationship. We're relating. And we're and what I'm trying to get you guys to focus in on is relate to the level of need. I'm trying to attune you to your own needs and also help you attune to your partner's needs so that you don't have to become hostile because you are dependent. You see, your partner will meet your needs if she knows what they are, unless there's something wrong with her, right? Now, if there's something wrong with her, then we got another decision. Just like you will meet your partner's needs unless there's something wrong with you. If there's something wrong with you, then you've got a different kind of problem. Right. But for the most part, pro-social relationships where people are coming together to try to do something good. Right. Not a criminal, not trying to exploit anybody. I'm there to meet your needs. I'm there to try to meet yours and try to get get you to meet mine. Right. And so I want to I want to like avoid hostility. First, I want to recognize that I do get I have a goddamn temper tantrum. Sure. I don't get my needs mad. I'm going to pout, get mad. I'm a grown ass man that my whole family knows I can kill everybody in the house. They know that better than I do. I'm not the only one, dude. Right. I'm dangerous. <coughs> I'm more dangerous now than I've ever have been. Why do you say that? Because I'm more advanced now. I know how to do more shit to get to you. <laughs> right. I've been around you guys. Right. Sure, I could. I need to know that. Sure. It'd be more dangerous now, right? It's crazy how, like, some, like, grown man with you can do as grown man and look at that really fine. Right. I can be extremely destructive. Right, right, right. Right. Maybe we're not as bad as the guys who are not here. Right. Yeah. Right. 
There's no reason for you to be ashamed. So up. Right. Because people don't know how to relate. Right. And there's no reason for you to feel ashamed or embarrassed or anything that you came here. We're trying to do something about it now. You guys are coming out of what many men are going into. You know, you guys can look in the mirror and put your heads up. You're taking some responsibility. You come in here, we're working on it. You don't have to be hostile anymore. You don't have to beat anybody up. You don't have to go back to jail. You don't. But we got to learn how to, re how to be in a relationship without being hostile, looking at our dependency. I depend on her. I only got one woman. I don't have six or seven other women. If she decides to cut me off, I'm cut off. <laughs> right? And I'm going to have a fit. So I got I to gotta relate to her with the truth. The truth is I need you. You're important to me. So my point earlier that I wasn't making was uh, that puts you in a very vulnerable position when you're that honest. Because some people will take advantage of it. Sure. But look, just because I don't acknowledge it doesn't mean I'm not vulnerable. I crossed the street before I came here. A car can run me over. Right? I played with infants two weeks ago thinking I'm going to be sick as hell next week. They got all kinds of germs. You know, I'm vulnerable, right? <laughs> I'm vulnerable anyway. That's why teachers are always sick. Right. <laughs> I don't know how much time I got left. That's a reality. I got worn out tools. Time is running out. I'm getting older. I can't do the shit I could do at 21 now. It's terrible. <laughs> but worth getting up and trying to, you know, it's worth it. What, what's the alternative? We are vulnerable. The, the quicker you, look, look, look. I can't, she slammed a cabinet. I can't take it. I'm sensitive. You know, she came in last night and the toilet paper, I, I have toilet paper on a stand and you have to screw it to, uh, to put it on. She had, was having trouble with it and she yelled at me. And I was like, I felt something, right? <laughs> I'm sensitive. You know, look, you, I'm here to try to help protect you from you. Not from her. <laughs> from what you can do. She's not here. <laughs> they gone. She's not here. You here. <laughs> right? So we got to, you know, and we can do this, right? Hostile. I've been hostile. Right? None of my, you know, I had enough of my needs met to survive, but not enough of them for me not to be hostile. <laughs> I'm angry. Right? So, and, and, and I'm unhappy, right? I don't want to have to depend on her. I don't want to have to depend on anybody, but unfortunately, I do. And it makes me feel all these feelings that I got to deal with, and I got to deal with them responsibly. I came, I came, is that your fault that I depend on you? All right? So, hostile dependency. I got a, I got a, a, a person that I know is in a relationship and a relationship is out of balance. It's out of balance in terms of what each party can do. You know, one person in a relationship makes all the money and does all the work, and the other person is barely able to take care of themselves, right? So that person that's barely able to take care of himself is dependent and passively aggressive because he's hostile about it. It doesn't feel good to not be able to take care of yourself, to not be fully self-supporting. It doesn't feel good. Right? So we shouldn't really get into relationships with people that can't support themselves. If the power balance, you know, you see a you see a 20-year-old woman involved with a 60-year-old man, that power can be a problem. They're fighting over that all the time. You see somebody in a relationship. Uh, she has no, he has no money. This person got a lot of money. They're going to be fighting over the imbalance, the dependency. It's going to come out a lot of times as hostility. This person acts out in the relationship, promises one thing, never follows through. And some people are looking for a parent figure. 
Yeah. Well, well, and, and one of the things that we're doing is I'm turning people into people that I know. That's the transference. I transfer onto you those qualities that I'm familiar with from past relationships. I turn you into my mom. I turn you into my dad. And I confirm my belief. Right? So we're working on that kind of stuff, right? A lot of times we'll find ourselves, look, we find ourselves in relationships that are very similar to relationships we've been in before. Right? Unconsciously, I'll be attracted to someone for a reason. Now look, then we got, now here's the, here's the other problem. In our society, we get a lot of messages about misogyny, right? The hatred of women. So if we're depending on a woman, then we really got some other feelings coming in from society. That you can't trust a woman. Women are no good. You see how women are being treated. You can grope one. The president says, just grab them by the pussy. If you're, if you're famous enough, just snatch one. You don't have to worry. Right? So women are getting, the, the dude just won the Nobel Peace Prize from the Congo working on reproductive destruction from them using rape as an act of war. Women catch hell. You know, uh, and if and if white women don't begin to speak up, we're lost. We're doomed. Right. They all voted for Kavanaugh. They all in with with Trump. Right. If they don't speak up and shoot for their rights, we can't be able to do anything about it. Right. But that misogyny, the way we view, listen to hip hop music, have nothing against hip hop music. But there's a lot of hatred of mama. A lot of mama hatred in it. Right. You remember, these are, the, these are the kids, these are the 12-year-olds whose mama left them to, to go do some stuff, to do some drugs, and now the kids got to make it some kind of way. They have a lot of hatred for women in it. And then I listen to a little Biggie Smalls and think I can walk around the house just talking shit, and it's not going to work, right? So I don't have anything against that. I don't have anything, you know, I, I'm not, it's an art form, right? It can, it, can, it can take you, you know, you can use it constructively or destructively, you know. So I don't have anything against hip-hop music. That's not my point. My point is it's an influence, and it can be a negative influence if you're not aware. Right? Right? Yeah. Yeah, the rapper right now is so terrible. Yeah, I don't have anything against young people or, or hip-hop music. Not that, but we got we to gotta be able to listen to it. Um, we, Maturely, yeah. I just don't like you. It's like all auto-tone and all of these bitches. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you say. Yeah, so, so, uh, got a low-grade, low-grade hostility. Right? Anybody in here, you don't have to tell on yourself. Anybody in here looking at porn? Okay, so I'm going to just, I'm going to just take that as your answer, Right? Porn is a way for, but, but porn, in some ways, porn is a way to, to like act out some of this hostility. Huh? Well, I'm, I'm just saying, how, okay, I'm making the claim, right? How can I make this claim? How can I make the claim that, that porn is hostile? Because they like hate They hate fucking, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. How, how can porn be hostile toward women? Not all of it, but a part of the message is, is that this is a place to, you know, like fucking like a weapon, right? Right? It's like going in and out, in and out. That's the whole focus. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's hurting or, you know, a lot of hostility gets worked out in the art, right? Hostile. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. You can work out this hostility on somebody that's less than human, right? Then you take that stuff home and throw your whole relationship off, right? Yeah, I don't buy. I don't buy your premise that it's hostile. It's necessarily hostile. Well, it's not necessarily hostile, but it can be hostile. There's some elements to it that are hostile. Well, yeah, it depends on the porn. Yeah, it depends on the porn, and also depends on the person, right? How are you looking at it? I had a chick tell me one time, like, choke me, but I'm going to 
you were like, I stopped. I was like, I'm cool. Like, <laughs> Dude, I, like, I don't know about that. Right, 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 right. So, so, so you don't, you don't see, you don't see any real, you don't see in in porn, you don't see any real caressing in porn. Yeah, now that women are starting to get involved in it, yeah, yeah, some of that. But 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 the but the most stuff that is put out, you don't see that. You get right to the shot, right? Maybe I'm thinking more of a erotica. erotica stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there is that now, but that's the influence of women coming in and trying to help, right? Putting some stuff out that's a little bit different. But in hardcore porn, hardcore porn is very hostile toward women. I'm gonna tie you up. I'm gonna gag you, right? I'm gonna push your head into the headboard. I'm gonna. That kind of stuff is just goes back. Like, they have like the Folsom Street Fair, which is like, that was bad. I I went to that good bus there. Yeah. Did you go there? Well, I was by work. But it literally goes right through. Yeah, I was just at the, I was actually just at the Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We got two, two, two conversations going. Let's go here and then we'll go here. That's a that's a that's an event that happens in San Francisco. Yeah, people people like it, and you can you know, two consenting adults can do whatever they want, right? But but what I'm really talking about is hardcore porn and the level of hostility that's in it. I didn't see Fifty Shades, so I don't know. I never seen it. Either. I never seen it. Either. I seen the first one, and it's kind of crazy, but but the girl likes it. But now, now look, there's a lot of there's a lot of variation in how people express themselves sexually. I don't have anything really to say about that, other than in in some of the hardcore porn that's produced, there's hostility in it, and we need to be able to see that in order to not take that too far. Right, as an art form or as something you want to do, that's one thing. But if you start being hostile in your relationship, thinking she's going to feel the same way the porn star feels, <laughs> you're probably going to end up out of a relationship. So that's why you got to put them both together. You got to be like aggressive. I remember I watched this like, documentary on Netflix. Right. So what you're talking about is a type of hostility, yeah. right? Yeah. It's not a person. It's a vagina. It's not a person. It's a penis. It's just in and out is what I want to see. I don't care about them having an emotional connection or anything like that. Where's the fucking? Yeah, right? The Let's get to the fucking. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm gonna fast forward through that part. Yeah, no foreplay. Yeah. Yeah, and then I and then I go home expecting my my partner sexuality. Porn never rejects you, right? Always available. It won't reject you like a person. You don't have to have any social skills. You need to know how to re work a remote control. You don't know how to re romance anybody or, or or make a play for it. You know, you just slap in a DVD and press, and boom, I'm there, right? Now we were never meant to view. That much nudity and sex. Do is compare my partner to the the the, the sex woman on the porn show. Well, it gets corrupted, right? Like Richard Pryor. You know, Richard Pryor said, uh, you know, maybe this time I want you to stand on the roof. I'm gonna run around the house three times, and on the third time, jump off on my face. All right. Well. All right. So so, but now what I really want to get back to is just the hostility that's in it, right? You know, hostile, hostile, right? 
So hostile, right? We can be hostile in our relationships. One of the ways I show my hostility is by not, a lot of times, not doing housework. Hostile. My view of women, they should be doing the housework. I didn't have to do nothing. One of the ways I can show my hostility is I just get quiet around the house. I don't want to talk. I don't want to engage you as a person. And, you know, so we get a, the hostility comes out in my avoidance of needs. I'm angry, right? I get angry, get a mood around the house. You know, where she knows I, I'm, I'm moping or I'm angry. I'm depending on her, but I'm, I'm mad at her, right? So I wanted to just make sure we talked about that, right? And so I don't want to like, I want to make sure we place the emphasis on us, right? Notice your hostility. You know, try to take it, try to take uh, care of it. Don't take it out on your partner. And, and in order to notice hostility, a good thing to just would like to, to pay attention to is unhappiness. When you feel unhappy, it's more likely for you to become hostile because we use cruelty in our relationships to feel better when we don't feel so good. Everybody does that. I want to, I take it out on you when I don't feel good. You know, you know that in some kind of way. I, I get short with you. I, I have an attitude with you. I raise my voice with you. I avoid you. Those are ways that I'm showing, I'm displaying hostility right, in my relationship. I may be doing some things behind your back. You may have pissed me off, now I'm going to go out and get high, or I'm going to go out and see another woman. I, those, are, those, are, those are ways of, of expressing hostility. That doesn't have to be the only motivation, but I'm saying this is a big contributor. I'm feeling hostile. I'm feeling mad. I'm going to fix you. I've got a resentment that I'm walking around with, and now it makes it okay for me to talk to somebody else. In fact, some men, you know, feel like, you know, I wouldn't have to talk to her. I wouldn't have to have a second girlfriend if you were doing what you needed to do, right? But that really is a type of hostility that's coming out. 